Hello everybody, this is John, and I wanted to give you part three of about stalking and hacking. So we've talked a lot about just what they've been doing, like for example, just hacking your bank accounts, your credit cards, things like that. What we need to talk about now is when they take it to the second level, the next level. And that level is when they actually are doing things in person to you. Now the first thing could be um, breaking into your apartment. As soon as they've done something where they've crossed the line, where you have some evidence or something going on, then you need to call the police and you need to file a, a restraining order or you need to just file a police report. And the benefit of filing a, uh, a police report is it does def definitely start a, a record, a legal record of what you feel suspicions are, especially when you know who the person is, but you can't prove it. At least let the police come, dust for fingerprints, see what they can find out. Now the second thing is filing a restraining order. Now chances are you're not going to get it because you don't have enough evidence. That's okay. When you file a police, uh, when you file a restraining order, that becomes public record. So again, you have a record, a legal record, that you have concerns about this individual. So that if it does get escalated, and you have a little bit more evidence, um, you will get that restraining order, and then the police will get involved and then it'll be a legal issue where hopefully they get arrested or at least get investigated. That's what you want to do. And um, But now, let's say they do um, start harassing you in person. Now this person probably won't do it themselves because they're a coward. Uh, they like to hide behind a computer and be a bully and do different things like that. And they use their friends to do the dirty work. So for example, let's say you're leaving your home or your apartment building and someone jumps out in front of you and kind of won't let you out or you come back and they won't let you back in the building or your home definitely call the police always call the police when it's something in person now another thing could be you could be walking down a street and you can tell someone's following you in a car again call the police on your phone um, if, especially if they jump out of the car and try to intimidate you um, another thing is is when you can tell you're being under surveillance let's say you see this car parked outside your home and then you go to your friend's house, which is far away, and there's the same person that you can see in the car sitting there. Okay, that means you're being under investigation by somebody who has hired this person who's stalking you. Um, so you should call the police and report that there's a car sitting there for four hours or whatever, and it's a suspicious person. Um, let me see, what else could you do? Um, well, again, if, you, if your apartment gets broken into, here's what you got to be careful about. If your phone is also hacked at the same time, what can happen is when you make a phone call, it's diverted to somebody that's working for the stalker, and they'll pretend like they're the police, or they'll pretend that they're your bank when your uh, password doesn't work. They'll even know how much money you have in the bank because they've already hacked it, so that's their way of letting you know that they see your account. But the truth is, they won't know your call-in passcode. Never give that out, even if they ask you if, you can, if you're suspicious that it might not be the real person. But that's what happens when your phone is being hacked. Every call you make will be diverted to someone that they work for. Now this is where it gets tricky, is that if your apartment's been broken into or your home and you want to change your locks and you think your phone's being hacked, do not use your phone go to someone else's phone, a neighbor or a friend. Uh, friends are kind of um, risky because they could be also hacking their phone too. But someone that's not related at all to you, friend or family, use their phone. Even a hotel might let you use their phone and try to find a locksmith that's legitimate or at least get a referral from somebody. Um, make sure it's a good lock like I mentioned I believe in part one. This is part three of my stocking series but I believe I mentioned it before don't just put any lock on there it can be picked you got to get a lock that is special made it's where you register the keys um, you'll no one can make a copy of the key without showing identification proving it's you and then you'll get a key but those locks are expensive um, with insulation it could cost you up to three hundred dollars but it's well worth it and also uh, with that lock, uh, it's impossible to pick it. They would have to knock your door down to get in. Uh, again, there's nothing you can do if they break your glass and your window. But again, even if they do that, um, that's going to be evidence. And they don't like evidence because then 
the police will get involved and they'll be under investigation. Here's the biggest thing I want to say to, to you. If you know who's doing it, tell everybody under the sun. Tell, go on Facebook and mention their name. Do anything you can to expose them. Now you'll think, well maybe they can sue me. Maybe they'll sue me for um, harassment or ba bashing their name or slander or maybe they'll file a, a restraining order on me. No, they won't. You're the last person they want to see in court. You're the last person they want to have to deal with in person. So don't worry about it. Tell everybody constantly under the sun every that you know who it is. Tell them what they've done to you and warn them. Because a lot of these people, especially on Facebook, if it's a Facebook friend that turned on you doing this, then um, they have a lot of mutual friends with you. And these people don't, won't know what to do, but you need to warn them. The nice thing about warning them is all of a sudden you'll get personal messages and say, you know, even without you telling me who it was, I figured it out. They did the same thing similar to me. They even stalked my friends. So you're not alone. Always tell everybody, even if they think some of the things you say are far-fetched and, you know, maybe paranoia and, you know, they question you whether you're, it happened or not. Tell them anyways because you know it happened and eventually you will be vindicated and you will get justice. Because people like that who have the big ego and hot-headed, they make mistakes and eventually they will get caught. So good luck with that and just all the best and I wish you guys will never have to deal with that. One quick more thing I wanted to mention is everything can be hacked, especially um, even this camcorder I have could be hacked. So you, especially if you um, connect it with a computer that's been hacked. So you got to be very careful. The best thing you can do is carry one of these, a disposable camera. Take pictures, especially if they're harassing you in person. Take everyone's picture, license plates, number, everything. Now you're wondering, are they going to hurt me in person? No, they won't. They won't physically hurt you. Because then you'll have to call the police and then there'll be more evidence. But just in case they would, what you want to do is like push them or kick them or something just to get away. Always run away first. Run away. But if they're confronting you and getting ready to reach for you or hurt you, try to disable them briefly. Don't try to fight them, but try to get enough seconds there so you can run away. Now, let's say they've already grabbed you and they're hurting you. Uh, you can't really carry a concealed weapon like a gun uh, or a knife um, unless you're authorized to carry a concealed weapon, which would be a gun. But if you're not, it's best to carry something with you. Now this is what I would recommend. It's a screwdriver with a really strong handle and it has a really good um, you know, end to it where you could be able to hit them or strap, you know, do something to them quick enough to run away again. Remember, running away is the most important thing. Good luck.